until we face the skyline. Oh, don't hold it back. Just watch me as I go. I'm breaking these chains. Hi, everybody. Hope you're well and you've enjoyed a fantastic weekend. So this is the tail end of the 30 by 30 inch panel that I was painting last week. Um, <clears throat> you'll probably recognise some of the water from the earlier video and the reeds of course. And now we're moving on to the rocks here in the foreground. Um, as you can see I'm working on the reflection at the moment. And once again, as per normal, I'm using one of my favourite techniques. And that's just to get some very watered down black. So we're using turpentine here. Uh, maybe a little bit of liquid in there as well. Uh, and I'm just putting black on. There's a touch of burnt umber in this as well, but it is predominantly black. Um, but because it's very watered, it's um, picking up a lot of the colour underneath it. So it, is, is, um, it looks black in the, in the video, but it is in fact a, a, it's coming out dark brown. Uh, once, uh, once we've sort of filled in all these darker areas, I'll go over the top with some of the highlights um, giving you the reflections of the lighter part of the rock above. Um, bearing in mind here that we are working wet on wet so I'm going to have to put on a few layers to really try and get that that thickness of uh, paint so that it looks light because you are painting light on dark. Don't hold it back. Just watch me as I I quite enjoy painting these um, reflections of the, the, in the in the foreground like this. Um, you really can, you know, put in loads and loads of detail. You can't really go too over the top here. And it, these little bits here, these these smaller areas where you've got rocks or you might have some reeds, um, really do finish the picture. It, it really helps give you that impact. Uh, and the depth of field. So I like to make this, these areas at the front here, and in particular with these rocks, look really sharp. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put an outline of almost black once again around each rock, just to sort of pull it out, and then I'll, I'll fill it in. It's you know it's not dissimilar from, um, you know, colouring in in a, in a colouring in book when you were a kid. It's the same, same sort of thing, a little bit more technical, but um, very effective. Learning from mistakes We could rise above ourselves oh. So let it all Keep floating down the stream The flow in my veins mm. We'll always try to reach for you I do apologise for my croaky voice I've had a bit of a cold the last few days I'm, I'm getting over it now but The uh voice has been the last thing to come back but I think it's, it's on its way now much to uh, my wife's displeasure I think so magical our waiting goal and we will never grow
Now I started off doing the lighter part of this rock with um, it's like a flat hog brush. Um, I wasn't terribly happy with the way it was working. It's, you know, sometimes these things, it's trial and error. It, you, you, you don't know exactly the best way to do it when you first start, but you try a few different techniques, find the one that works well. And in this case, that wasn't the one. So a bit later on, I'll go on to uh, using uh, a pointed brush and I'm almost drawing the detail on with that. Once I start using this uh, more pointed brush here, the technique doesn't really change a great deal. <coughs> Excuse me. You're just putting the lights on in the right places, and uh, I'll put it on. <coughs> I put it on to begin with, thinking it would be light enough. But as the paint dries, it does tend to darken a little bit sometimes. So I'll end up going over it again, possibly with something a little bit lighter, just to give it that that strength against the dark water below it, behind it. There's something nice about putting a, a, um, a solid object like that in a, in a picture. Because, you know, unless you're painting a building or a stone wall or something like that, a, you know, a um, human-made structure, you don't have too many sort of sharp edges. Um, but with these rocks, because you've got the rest of the water is quite soft and the reeds are... You know they're they're quite soft too. This this really does help give you that depth of field, um, and I tend to find that when I'm painting, I do try and keep the distance as soft as I can, really. Um, and then the foreground, I like to really sharpen it up. And one way to do that is to put that dark line around the outside, and you can do that with pretty much anything. I mean, I, I'll do that with leaves. So as you come right to the very foreground, if, you know, in the undergrowth, you've got leaves and or blades of grass or reeds or whatever it is. And I'll do a, a very, very thin dark line around it. And it really does help sharpen it up, it gives it that contrast to make it look sharper. So here we're moving into the slightly darker areas of the rock and it's similar tone to the the lighter part all I've done here is I've just mixed in a little bit more black you've got perhaps a bit of um, fello green possibly in that just a touch you've got still got the um, burnt umber there might be a bit of ultramarine blue in that as well um, but you're just you're, you're just slightly darkening it a bit it is a very similar tone and of course it will be a little bit cooler as well, hence the blue. So I'm just working my way here from the left side of the rock over to the right there. And as you can see, I've got that little bit of wood there that I'm leaning against so I don't smudge the paint. Putting in a water line. It's quite effective doing this actually. I don't know that this was in the original photograph, but I quite like putting that in. It just it just helps it look like uh, like water, I think. Just gives it that little special touch. Do the same thing now with the uh, rock to the right of it. Probably won't do the whole whole area here, but I think that's pretty much all you need, just to give it that idea that it's sitting in the water. And <coughs> oh, I have a cough. The old throat's drying up here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let this time lapse go on for a little bit. But once again, the technique hasn't changed, so. 
I'm just building it up here. I do plan on um, going into more detail in the next few weeks um, and from then onwards um, with regard to mixing the paint um, and the colours that I use. Um, I'm going to have another camera set up on the palette so you can see in real time exactly what I'm mixing. I've had a, quite a few people ask me about the colours um, and uh, I think that will be a, a pretty interesting addition to the video So, and will also help you, give you a better idea of uh, what I'm doing. But um, as I always say, it's not necessarily the way to do it or the best way to do it for you, but this works well for me. Um, you know, there is no right or wrong way for this. It's just it's about trial and error. And uh, I've spent years and years and years doing the, the wrong thing as well as the right thing. I've, I've learned, learned the best way to do certain things. So if I can help you in any way, then that's great. felt more like a winner than I do tonight Never more certain the path laid before me was right You over there with the girls in your hair Couldn't find more of a reason to stare Never seen eyes look into me as you do tonight And honey, I've been Racing the wind like a bird Been chasing the wealth of the world But it fades when you're near So tell me where we go from here Tell me where we go from here
Cause honey, I. 